The other name for this holiday, as we have said, is Chag HaAsif, which means the festival of ingathering. In Exodus 23:16, and the feast of harvest, the first fruits of thy labors, which thou hast sown in the field, and the feast of ingathering, which is in the end of the year, when thou hast gathered in thy labors out of the field. So we see that this is in fact at the end of the year. The word HaAsif comes from the root Asa, which means to gather and also to move to the rear in order to gather up the stragglers. Genesis 29, 8. And they said, We cannot until all the flocks be gathered together and till they roll the stone from the well's mouth, then we water the sheep. So the shepherds are waiting for all the shepherds to be there because the stone is very heavy so they can move it uh, from the mouth of the well. In Isaiah 52, 12, for ye shall not go out with haste, nor go by flight. For Yahweh will go before you, and the God of Israel will be your rear word. Uh, so this R-E-R-E -E is not re-reward, but it should be R-E-A-R, -E to the back. To, in other words, to be the rear guard in order to make sure the stragglers stay with the group. By extension, we see an idea that you gather something up until there isn't any more. In Genesis 30, 23, uh, Rachel is speaking, and she has finally conceived her son Joseph. And I want you to keep this idea in mind because we're going to see this idea again. And she conceived and bare a son and said, God hath taken away my reproach. He gathered it up and uh, so it doesn't exist anymore. She was finally able to conceive a son. In Isaiah 60, 20, the sun shall no more go down, neither shall thy moon withdraw itself. For Yahweh shall be thine everlasting light, and the days of thy mourning shall be ended. The parent root of um, Asaf is just the Samech Pei, and we'll see some related words for that. The root, Samech Pei, Saf, is the idea of a door or a threshold or the edge of something. So it comes to mean also a cup or a bowl because of the edge of the cup, what we would call the lip of the cup. Uh, it has to do with the end of things. We'll see that in a minute. First Kings 14, 17. And Jeroboam's wife arose and departed and came to Tirzah. And when she came to the threshold of the door, the child died. In Zechariah 12:2, Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of trembling unto all the people round about, when they shall be in the siege both against Judah and against Jerusalem. A related root, sof, which means the end or the conclusion of anything. Ecclesiastes 3:11, He hath made everything beautiful in his time. Also he hath set the world in their heart so that no man can find out the work that God maketh from the beginning to the end. Again in Ecclesiastes 12:13, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Another related root, Yud Samech Pei Yasaf, which means to add or increase to join oneself or to continue to keep doing something in order to increase it. In Genesis 8:21, and Yahweh smelled a sweet savor and Yahweh said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground any more for man's sake, for the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite any more every living thing as I have done. And so this is Yahweh's speech after the flood is over. In Deuteronomy 4.2, ye shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall ye diminish aught from it, that ye may keep the commandments of Yahweh your God, which I command you. Again, with the idea of prolonging something to continue it, Psalm 61.6, thou wilt prolong the king's life and his years as many generations. In Proverbs 1.5, a wise man will hear and will increase learning, and a man of understanding shall attain wise counsel. So he will continue to learn, and that will add to his learning. What does tabernacles mean in the spiritual life of a believer? 
Tabernacles is the fulfillment of the time that Yeshua comes and dwells with his people. And as the we see that it's the last festival, it is at the end of the age. One of the first things that we can understand is that this life is temporary. The first mention of Sukkot is in Genesis 33, 17. And Jacob journeyed to Sukkot and built him a house and made booths for his cattle. Therefore, the name of the place is called Sukkot. Sukkot is also the first stop of the Exodus when the people came out of Egypt. And so they were on their way traveling to a new place to the promised land and they made a temporary dwelling to uh, well, as we would think of camping as they're camping which is something that we do during Sukkot we camp out um, and and these ideas are that this place is a temporary place we don't live in this place forever uh, Philippians 3.20 also teaches this. Our conversation, which is not a great translation, but we see in the NASB and the New King James, it's translated as a citizenship. Our citizenship is in heaven, from whence we also look for the Savior, the Lord Yeshua, the Messiah. And again in Hebrews 11.13, These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off and were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. So during this time of camping out, understanding that life on this earth, the way it is now, is temporary. Another thing that the name of the festival points to is that the people are going to be gathered. In Isaiah 11:11 11, 11 and 12, and it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria and from Egypt, and from Pathros and from Cush, and from Elam and from Shinar, and from Hamat and from the islands of the sea. And he shall set up an ensign for the nations, and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel, and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. I've highlighted these two words to set again, and to assemble so we can look at them in the Hebrew. In the first verse we see Yosef which means to continue and that's what is translated as said again and in the second verse Asaf which means to, to assemble, to gather. Remember when we were talking about Rachel where she said um, the Lord has gathered up my reproach and taken it away. This is Asaf. And then she goes ahead and names the child Yosef. So we see both those words here in these two verses. I want to go over to the story in uh, Genesis where Joseph reveals himself to his brothers. And we read that story and he says, I am Joseph. And in English we just see, oh right, this is my name and this is who I really am. And the brothers are dumbfounded, but they know his name and who he is. But we look at it in the Hebrew he says, Ani Yosef. It's more than just his name. It gives us both these ideas. First of all, I'm the one who's going to continue your line. I'm the one who's holding um, the family to be able to continue it. And he saves them from the famine. Um, and also in terms of Joseph being a shadow picture of Yeshua, he's the one that continues the family again and again. He keeps making it go along to prolong its days. And then he also is Yosef. He is the one that will gather. And he has gathered the family. They had to come out of Canaan because of the famine. And he has gathered them. And likewise, Yeshua is gathering the family. In Ezekiel twenty thirty four, And I will bring you out from the people, and will gather you out of the countries wherein ye are scattered, with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm and with fury poured out. Matthew 24, 31 And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Revelation 14, 19 And the angel thrust in his sickle into the earth and gathered the vine of the earth and cast it into the great winepress of the wrath of God. During these times of distress, Yahweh's people will be covered, they'll be protected. Romans 5 9. Much more then, 
being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Ephesians 5, 6 Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. 1 Thessalonians 5, 9 But God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Yeshua the Messiah. Yahweh's people will be cleansed. Jeremiah 33, 8 And I will cleanse them from all their iniquity, whereby they have sinned against me, and I will pardon all their iniquities whereby they have sinned and whereby they have transgressed against me. Ezekiel 36:25. Then I will sprinkle clean water upon you, and you shall be clean. From all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you. Ephesians 5:26. That he, that is Yeshua, might sanctify and cleanse it, that is the congregation, with the washing of the water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. And in fact, everything will be cleansed. Acts 3.21 Whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution. And I was talking about Yeshua going back up into heaven. Um, restitution has come to have a different meaning now in English. We think of it as paying back somebody for something. A better modern translation would be restoration. Until the times of restoration of all things, which God hath spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. In Revelation 21, 5, And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. Yahweh will dwell with his people in that day. In Revelations 21, we read, And I heard a great voice out of heaven, saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them. And they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and be their God. And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon to shine in it. For the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. I'm sure as you meditate on these different verb roots that we have discussed, different related roots, that many other ideas and associations will come to you concerning the Festival of Tabernacles. In the meantime, Tasimita Inayam al Hashamayam, keep your eyes on the sky, your attention draweth nigh. Shalom.